Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Now, our second conversation would be about the state of the nation. Uh, we're talking about Nigeria. Now, we're, talk we're also going to be looking at the issue of kidnapping, the issue of uh, kidnapping uh, terrorist activities in the northern part of Nigeria, IPOP in the southeastern part of Nigeria, and the issue of governance in the federal capital territory. And we do have a guest in, uh, with us who's going to be joining us uh, via Zoom, Mr. Uh, Daly. It's good to have you join us this morning, Mr. Daily. For having me, good to see you. All right, so uh, let's start off with generally. Uh, how would you describe, you know, the state of the nation? Looking at the fact that when the president uh, got into power, President Muhammad Buhari, in 2015, he had promised Nigeria that, you know, security would be a thing of the past. And here we are, we're still talking about the issue of kidnapping, uh, banditry, amongst others, you know, in different parts of the country. I believe there were two principal campaign promises made by General Buhari leading to the 2015 elections. The first was the promise of security, and he leveraged a lot on his experience as a general. The second, of course, was the much touted anti corruption battle, which has today been devolved into a farce. But when you ask the question about security, let's understand something. The primary duty of the state is the protection of the life and properties of the citizens. But that is the beginning of the Nigerian conundrum. The primary duty of the Nigerian state appears to be the security of the state, the preservation of the state, the discount, the discountment of the rights of those whom it calls citizens, and the abandonment to every element that might prey on them. Nigeria today, security-wise, is worse than where it was in 2015. In 2015, insecurity in Nigeria, at least as it related to insurgency or terrorism, was largely confined to the Northeast. Today, the Northwest, including the president's own state, is a place where people don't sleep with both eyes shut anymore. So today, in the Northwest, in the Northeast, in the North Central, you have terrorism that is blightly referred to as banditry, vandalism. They are even businessmen sometimes. The only thing they have not been designated in most cases is exactly what they are, terrorists. Now, only General Buhari knows why these people are not terrorists, but the likes of Sunday Bo, Namdi Kanu, Yele Shoure are terrorists. These are the questions we need to ask ourselves when we begin to talk about insecurity. It's a function of what the state considers important. The amount of policemen that were at Lekki Toll Gate just on the anniversary of the first, uh, the first anniversary of the NSAS thing, they would have been sufficient to perhaps police the trail line. But the rail line was not as important as ensuring that people do not vote speak as citizens. So it's a function of what the Nigerian state considers terrorism, what it considers important, and what it discounting as. So where the Nigerian state believes terrorists are, it is dealing with terrorism there. That's why you have 34,000 policemen deployed to Anambra for an election. But you don't have 34,000 policemen deployed around Kaduna to provide security, even though people are being killed and kidnapped daily. So it's a function of national priority. It's not a function of, it's not about manpower. I think it was uh, Commodore Laumi when he was speaking on Arise. He made it abundantly clear. It's a function of what the state considers important to it at any point in time. The Nigerian state is more focused on silencing the voices of those who demand citizenship it is not interested in chasing after, oh, I forget, they are not terrorists, they are bandits. 
oh, Vandal Street. They can be Vandal sometimes, but they are anything but terrorists. So it's a function of the priority of General Buhari. Those who we believe to be terrorists, even goes as far as Kenya to kidnap them to come and face trial. One is being chased around in Bene. So it's a function of the priorities of the president. And it's not just the president. There is a House of Assembly. There is a Senate. There are governors. We have people all over Nigeria, men who believe themselves to be men and women of good conscience. Why aren't they talking? Why is it left to those who are considered the lunatic fringe to point out the obvious insanity of labeling pro-democracy, pro... The ladies don't say self-determination agitators. This is a constitutional right. I have every right, if I believe Nigeria is not working for me, to say so and advocate for my own enclave, however I care to define it, as long as I am speaking so within the boundaries of civility. But when you criminalize dissent, but you turn a blind eye to criminality, this is what you get. So it's not just about the North. It's the entire length and breadth of Nigeria that you have. And it's not, look, if we must tell ourselves the truth, the problem we have today is essentially a national problem found on a lack of justice. Take away all the things that legitimizes IPOP's struggles, and you diffuse the situation. But there has been no interest shown, none whatsoever, in finding any reconciliation. If anything, you're pushing people to extremes, almost as if people have been asked to go to war. God forbid that we find ourselves in that kind of situation, but the reality is, yes, my forbid, but we're already in one. Not east, not west, not central, south, south. The Nigerian state pays rent to take oil in the south, south. Southwest, if they are not, I can't go to Ibadan feeling comfortable. I have to go, I have to worry about being kidnapped on the road. For what? And yet there is a there is a government in the most basic of the duties of a state. The Nigerian state has failed. And if we are rating precedents in terms of security, in my lifetime, Nigeria has never had it this bad. Never. I drove in my youth, I would drive Lagos about the express. And I'm not Professor Shoyinka for heaven's sake. He used to tell, tell us how he, would, he, he, he has books and poems where he described riding all the way to Kaduna in the middle of the night, going driving into the north. We can't even live that life again. My children can't have that. I, I used to tell my kids I used to drive on Lagos about the express with one hour from end to end. My children can't have that. Look. Well, All Mr. right, so but, but, to me, um, okay, apologies, Mercy. Just, uh, just before I, okay. I let you, you know, come through, uh, should the president be responsible for, you know, security across the 36 states of the federation, including the FCT? Let's be clear about something. We lie too much to ourselves in Nigeria. The fraudulent constitution called Decree 24 places every security apparatus under the control of whoever the current occupant of that demonic place called Asso Rock. I have no apologies for saying that. They go in there, everybody appears to lose their brains. He is the sole person responsible. It is only in Nigeria that you can actually give, you can give reality to that American maxim. The buck stops on this desk. The box stops on General Buhari's desk. He's the sole person who can command the army. He can command the... He's the only person. He's the commander-in-chief. It is only in Nigeria that that vile statement finds full expression. If this gerontocrat does not get up to tell them to do this, they won't do it. However much a state commissioner of police might have been rendered complicit by participation in the local crimes, the reality is that at the end of the day, the ultimate decision as to deployment and operation comes directly from the presidency. We can blame these governors, and yes, they deserve to be blamed because many of them are inept and corrupt. But the reality is that the powers of deployment, either for troops 
anything related to the armed forces and the police is directly at the desk of General Buhari or whoever occupies that office at any point in time. No, we are not a federation. This question itself even it, it exposes the lies of the federal of what we call federalism in Nigeria. Please let me ask you. In what other federal entity in the world do you find states incapable of running their own police force? Where else? And the only place it is permitted in Nigeria, permitted under the reign of impunity, are in those states busy enacting laws that are patently treasonous, and then you are raising his bad forces to be breaking beer bottle, and you are happy to share the proceeds of VAT from the same beer. Come on. So at the end of the day, this is not a federation. Let's forget all that lie about true federalism. Well, if it is right, why? If it is the truth, why are you qualifying it with truth? True federalism. There is no federalism in Nigeria. We have a unitary command system. And I'm borrowing the word unitary advisedly because what we have, we insult the British who typifies unitary. Because in, in, in unitary Britain, you have devolution of powers to all the regions. The London Metropolitan Police is, is distinct from those who are in Greater Manchester. Each person takes their operational command from the local authorities. But look at us in Nigeria. So I will look and not call Dumosu unless it's, unless it's something that is between them. He can't. He doesn't have such powers. So when we call it federation, it's not a federation. This is one of the stupid. We built so everything on lies. Please, oh, Mr. only Buhari and Buhari alone is responsible for the security of Nigeria. He is the commander and chief. Oh, chief. Oh. Um, deliver out to me. I, I, I'm sure there's, you know, a lot of people who may not necessarily agree with you. Uh, they've we've seen a lot of statements uh, from Lai Mohammed, from uh, Femi Adesino, and, and the likes, who say that there's a lot of gains that you know we, we that are on record with the current administration, and if done well, um, you know, they might even go as well as saying that Nigerians might be begging uh, for a man like Buhari, a person like President Buhari, you know, come 2023. Um, but I, I want you to, you know, talk about, you know, go moving forward. You know, earlier in the, in the in, on the program this morning, I was, you know, asking about what we really have achieved in the last six years. Um, but what, what must we do as a nation if we need to move forward? Elections are coming in 2023. Um, it's scary for a couple of people. See, so, yeah. one of the first things we need to do if we must move forward we must first of all stop accepting the lies that lie Mohammed tells us. It is critical that we switch on our brains, interrogate the facts. Is pocketbook economy, you earn salaries as well, or you earn income in one form or the other. You cannot say your economy is better today than it was six years ago. I'm not suggesting that um, it would have been El Dorado if it had been a continuation of the reign of the PDP. They were as inept and as incompetent as the current lot. And if you really think about it, they're one and the same. It's the same people who are in PDP seven years ago that are largely in the APC today. But the reality on the ground is that it would appear as if in the last six years, somebody has been on a deliberate mission to destroy Nigeria. His economic base has been violently attacked. We have um, assured the destruction of local manufacturing by the kind of policies the government has taken on. The duplicity of the government in the areas of policy management and execution has assured that everybody sees these policies that are disadvantageous to them as just another attempt at erecting toll gates for some people to benefit. So it's been about the administration of the impunity. But there is a lot that we have gained in the last six years of General Buhari. A lot of people might not agree with this, but I, I, would, I would say to you, 
that every illusion that anyone might have ever had about Nigeria, about the democracy we practice, about the laws of citizenship, anyone who might have had doubts, by now those doubts should have been adequately evaporated by the brazenness of the Buhari administration. So we've gained that. But insofar as it relates to any other gains, regardless of what line Mohammed, line Mohammed might have to say or uh, Femi Adeshi, no, those ones who say anything they are told to say, they are ventriloquist dogs. I'm not, that's not me abusing anyone. All you have to do is look around you. Any sane person looking around Nigeria will know that neither Mr. Lai Mohammed nor Mr. Femi Adeshino has seized on their faculties because they are far removed from the realities. You look all over Nigeria and you have problems everywhere. You're talking 2023 elections. You are deploying 34,000 policemen to Anambra State for the elections. By official figures, Nigerian police is roughly a little over 300,000. But when you speak to people in the security forces, those figures are actually closer to less than 200,000. It's just about inflation of numbers and then people who are posted to go and sat in somebody's at somebody's gatehouse account. But when you really look at operational forces, just by 150. So you are having an election in Anambra State. Let me even accept the upper level of your figures. Let's say 350,000 policemen. You've deployed 34,000 to Anambra for the election. In 2023, it means that you have only sufficient numbers for 10 states. Are we going to have staggered? If are we going to be, oh, we will import policemen from China. Abi, there can't be elections in this situation. We should be talking about fundamental restructuring of Nigeria, not elections. We can't have elections here. And I'll say for a fact, I don't believe that even General Buhari is honestly planning for any election. There is nothing to suggest that. People can fool themselves all day long. All you need to do is look, open your eyes, look around you. If they are deploying 34,000 policemen to Anambra, how many are they going to have to deploy to Yobe, to uh, Kaduna, to Katsina, to Zamfara, to Sokoto, where people are now being killed in their Sunday markets? Sokoto, please. We are not prepared for any elections. And I seriously doubt that even General Buhari or the people around him can genuinely claim to be preparing for an election. They are not. They are not. They are preparing for something different. What that is, time will reveal. But they are definitely not preparing for an election. Right. Okay, but uh, let's, uh, you know, stay with Anambra now for a bit and talk about the proposed election on the 6th of November. Uh, we also know that uh, IPOP has also proposed a seat-at-home order from the 5th uh, through the 10th of November. Now, looking at antecedent, you see that there's been some level of compliance and you want to juxtapose that with, uh, you know, this uh, order that has been put out. What should we expect in Anambra? Well, um, I believe it was General Philip Effion when he was delivering the instrument of surrender to Obasanjo. He said to him, I might not be quoting him correctly, but I'll, I'll, let me just paraphrase. He says, treat these people well, or their children will bear hands against you. He was referring to the Tundibu as these people, and he was referring, of course, to the Nigerian state as the you that they will bear hands against, that's the children. The problem with Nigeria is that it is built on injustice and it is reflexively unjust. And when it is confronted with its ugliness, instead of embracing the truth and seeking to find reconciliation, it constantly seeks to kill the truth even more. Now, IPOB does not exist in a vacuum. It is validated by the several layers of injustice that have been perpetrated against generations of Ndi. What you are seeing today, I am not a man who agrees with violence in any form. 
Not that the Nigerian state would allow you anything peaceful anyway. But it is a test of IPOB's legitimacy. And it is already obvious that the federal government lacks legitimacy. If you need to send 34,000 policemen to enforce a vote, well, it shows. So it's a, it's a, it's a referendum on Nigeria. Ndipo has been asking for a referendum for a season. You and I already know the art and mind of Ndigo is IPOP. It might not like or endorse IPOP's methodologies, and I don't. I deprecate the methodologies. But I have participated in sit at homes during the June 12th struggle. I endorse sit at homes as a methodology of struggle because it's not about violence. So if a group has said, we are calling for a sit at home to show that we don't want this process to continue in the absence of the resolution of our grievances. I have nothing to say against how a man elects to protest the injustice he suffers. The only thing you might hear me condemn is violence. But in this case, all they've asked is for people to sit at home. Those who believe otherwise should also go ahead and mobilize their people to come out and vote because I'm sure that Ndibu has many voices. It cannot be that everybody agrees with IPOP. So those who don't agree with IPOP, let them also go ahead and mobilize the people. It was, uh, Ndibu is one of the best organized society in Nigeria. They have all sorts of unions, town unions, trade unions, market unions. They mobilize themselves much more effectively than other na ethnic nationalities here. So if people have contrary opinions to what IPOB has canvassed, I'm sure those will be expressed as well. It is the duty of the state, if it hasn't failed, to provide security. And if it has sent 34,000 men to Enuba and to Anambra, I'm sure they cannot now claim that that is why All people right. do not vote. So it's a function of whether IPOB is effective or ineffective. Deliver out to me. I genuinely wish that we had more time to hear you speak and to you know, get your views on these issues, but we have to wrap up here. Uh, but thank you very much for being a part of our Monday morning and uh, looking forward to speaking with you again. Thank you. And of course, uh, this is where we'll be saying goodbye this Monday morning. If you missed out on any of these, remember where to catch up. It's simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Instagram, same with our YouTube channel, and also Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Uh, I am Osao Gye Ogbawa. And I am Messi Boko. Do have a great day.